let's put it this way. This constitution is for the citizens of this country to participate in the election. You never know who bribed whom, how much was the bribe for, what quid pro was there. You never get to know. That there is quid pro quo malads is in my first submission. That capital and influence go together. Well, no, nobody can doubt that proposition. Malas. So in effect, in effect, through this scheme, you are trying to protect those people. Where the source of the money is, my learning friend has argued, I don't want to well, let's repeat anything that, that he has said. And well, let's see what, the, what, what is the scheme. If it's less than 2,000 rupees, it's cash. If it's more than 20,000 rupees, the name of the donor has to be given. And if it is electoral bonds, nothing. That's the three layers of the scheme. So while the donor's name will be given, if it's more than 20,000 rupees, Right. And so ordinary, well, ultimately, well, the corporate sector is not a voter. The citizen is the voter. The citizen should be entitled, is entitled to contribute. If he gives more than 20,000 rupees, his name will be there. But the corporate sector, who is not a citizen, can donate 10 crores, 100 crores, his name will not be there. What's the rationale for that? I, as a citizen's name, I'll have to be, it will have to be disclosed. So is the corporate sector is being granted a privilege over a citizen of this country? That privilege of anonymity. How is he more privileged than a citizen who is at the heart of the constitution of India? How is he being given a preferential treatment? Why? Because you want to enrich yourself through this scheme. And enrich yourself because you're in power. Whereas the opposition may be in power in a state. They will also enrich themselves. I'm not, this is not political. Because all business will actually be attracted towards this scheme because this is one way of getting access. I just pardon me, Maras, for saying so from personal experience. If people donate, Maras, we know who is donated. He will give me a call and say, Sir, I want to come over. I will hear him. But if I don't know his name who is donated, Maras, I won't listen. I mean, I, how many calls will I answer? So you get access. Straight away you get access. And this, all this anonymity that we are talking about is really not anonymous. Because the person who donates will go and tell him orally that I gave you such and such money. This is the amount I gave you. 100 crores. Only he will know that he gave. The anonymity would exist only if it was truly fungible. That's right. In which case, if it's truly fungible, like a DMAT account, in That's which case, right. you give it to say the election. Then it's company, anonymity. And then it is, uh, right. then it becomes anonymous. That's right. Now it is not. In fact, it is not anonymous if you ask me. That's my summation. Because I have given a hundred crores, I know that I bought a bond. My learned friend, Mr. Shanti Bhushan, uh, Mr. Shant Bhushan said, no, no, uh, he'll give it to a third person, doesn't matter. But who is interested in, in that bond? The person who I, who I bought the bond. So I will go and tell whoever I want to tell that I gave you. So he doesn't have to go to the State Bank of India. Let's talk practical politics. He doesn't have to go to the State Bank of India to find out. Nor does the State Bank of India have to disclose it. The person who gave it will disclose it. Because he knows why he gave it. The issue which we are just discussing on which perhaps the learned attorney may give us an answer, but since Mr. Sibel is on his leg, we will just put it to him, Mr. Attorney and Mr. Saraswati, you can also, any of turn, you can answer. Suppose A purchases the bond. Yes. A purchases bonds worth X amount, 100 crores. Yes. A, A is only the person who has been put up to purchase the bond because that's that's A has a KYC, etc. Yes, yes, yes. A has to only physically hand over the bond to B. Yes. Right? Who's in or B gives it to C, who will in turn give it to a political party. Correct. Now, B, there is no control over the transaction between A and B. Yes. So B can trade on that bond for cash or for yes. whatever other concerns. Yes, yes. B acquires that bond. Yes. B hands it over to a political party. Yes. Or B gives it to C and C hands it over to a political party. Yes. The person who satisfied the requirement of the transaction being through the normal banking channels is A, the purchaser, the ostensible purchaser of the bond. Correct. But this does not obviate the fact that the people who are really behind, behind it, it yes. that they have used authorized banking channels. Yes. All that they have to do is that the, the, Get somebody's the by says trading is prohibited, yes. but there is no way you can prohibit Absolutely. trading the bond. Absolutely. B doesn't have to buy the bond from no, A doesn't. through official banking no, no, channels. Because no. Because there is no record of any transactions in the bond. It that's just goes from hand to hand. That's right. Because of the curtain, then you cannot be any questions with regard to quid pro quo. That's right. And then ultimately, the person who is actually invested in it is the person who will tell the political party. Who is the holder ultimately? No, no, no. In this case, probably, 
the purchase, they know who is the could purchaser. Could be B or C. <laughs> could they know the purchaser, but the actual purchaser is A. B. Exactly. Whereas the in the in the KYC etc. A is the one who's. That's right. Absolutely right. So, Mara, this is it. This is a it's, it 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 perpetuates. It also, B may be an aggregator of the bonds. That also. By having 10 different people subscribe to 100 different people subscribe to a bond yeah. worth 1 crore each. That's right. Well, they are the human, at least the Indian human mind is ingenious in these matters. <laughs> we control the economy of the world in many ways. And the RBI raised these concerns repeatedly. Last of all, Mulats, if I do not know these facts, if I don't get to know the name of the donor, I don't get to know the transaction, I don't get to know the possible direct or indirect which pro quo. I can't participate in democracy. It is also a matter of participation in democracy. I will then be sued for defamation that you made this allegation without the facts. But how will you get to know? How will I get to know the facts if you hide the facts through an electoral scheme like this? I can't raise questions in Parliament. I can't raise questions outside Parliament. Because the scheme, Malaz, has no definite objective. If it were a definite objective of funding through the corporate sector, the process of election without funding a political party, I can understand. You can have electoral bonds to fund the election process. But what you are doing here is you are funding a party. It's different. The object is different. So you call it electoral bonds, but these are not electoral bonds. And the limit of expenditure has nothing to do with it. Well, it's 123, 6 of the Constitution, uh, of the Representation of People's Act, talks of expenses, corruption, an act of corruption beyond 95 lakhs now. So the larger issue that your lordships will have to consider that this is no part of participatory democracy at all. Every scheme must have a legi legitimate object. What's the legitimate object here? Which is constitutional. It is, it, the, the scheme must be such, it must be proportionate to the objects sought to be achieved. And it, the underlying principle under the constitution is free and fair election, which is a basic feature of the constitution. How are you serving these three purposes, Mullahs? You are serving none of these three. No legitimate object because it is not limited to the elections. No proportionality because it's unlimited. And no free and fair elections because my learned friend has shown to your lordships how heavily it is loaded towards the party in power. So you are creating a non-level playing field through the electoral bonds. And that's violative of 324. Now, Mullahs, historically, as your lordship knows, Mullahs, in 1969, through legislation, we had Mullahs prohibited corporate donations altogether. In the 1985, Mullahs, through an amendment, we said, okay, the corporate sector can donate, but only to the extent of 5% of the average earnings in the last three years, three financial years. 5% or 7.5%? I'm sorry? Okay. Initial 5%. Mullahs, 85 was 5%. Then through an amendment, it was... 2013 Act, it was changed to 7.5, the Companies Act. Well, actually, I've put it all in the written submissions, but because my blended colleagues are waiting for me to end, so I'm not wanting to take their time, Malas. Well, your lordships have said that do it, at, you know, be as short as possible. But whatever I have said to your lordships, Malas, are the propositions that emerge from the scheme itself. It must never be forgotten that this constitution is citizen-centric, it is for the citizens to decide to donate. If you want corporate funding, then that corporate funding must be for the electoral process. It must not be for political parties. Otherwise, it will not be free and fair election. And well, it's this whole concept of black money, I mean, I don't understand. The cash that is given below 2,000 can be black money. The 20,000 rupees has to be disclosed. That also can be black money. Because you can say cash in hand, 20,000 rupees. And the electoral bond can also be black money. And over, above, over and above that, there is black money. Because there is cash that doesn't go into electoral bonds. So what is this black money issue about? The kind of extravaganzas that we see, mothers, is what? Is it white money? So this is nothing to do with black money. This is the, this is the case of the government. That black money was used earlier, no doubt. Black money is used, used today, no doubt. There is more cash in the market than it was in 2014 or 2019. That's government's own statistics. So black money is a bogey. And all three elements can be part of black money. That can't be an argument. You can use advertising campaign for whatever you like with that money. Show your face 20 times a day. 
and see the nexus. The corporate sector gives money to the political party. The political party and the corporate sector owns a media house. Can you just look at the nexus. The corporate part, donor owns the media house. The corporate donor gives it to the political party. The political party uses the media house. No questions asked. What are you hinting at this? Uh, I'm sorry? What are you hinting at? at Mala, they, they, what, you you close you? the account, that's the end of the matter. Mala, so you get the money, close the account. But that's it, and then you spend it the way you want. Mala, this, is not, this is not a scheme for... for Mala, I can understand. Mala, I, quite frankly, I can understand the corporate sector being told that you, we impose a cess like education says. You impose a cess on the corporate functioning of companies. With that says you have a you have a capital and capital you distribute in accordance with the representation in the Lok Sabha. So everybody has the same amount. And the same money can be used for that. What you are doing now is entirely different. You are saying you give me as much money as you want to give me. That has he's argued Muller that So your submission is this is not money for electoral participation but money for Enriching the, the political party. party. Yeah. Individual party. He's just enriching the party. There are no spending requirements. No, 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 requirement no, no, no accountability. Nothing. No accountability. Absolutely no accountability. What's the next point? The last point, but the yes. fifth point, is that in fact it protects the, 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 the nature of the scheme protects those who have committed a crime. I'll give you an example. Under the Prevention of Corruption Act, Mullers, Section 7 of the Prevention of Corruption Act, you give money to a public servant, members of parliament are public servants, many members of the political party who are in the fray are public servants. Now, in, as your lordship knows, under Section 7, you can also prosecute a person in anticipation of a favor, not just having granted a favor. So, you give a donation, no questions asked, you get a favor, you don't, cannot correlate one with the other, and I can't prosecute you. This is a scheme to protect criminals from being prosecuted. 